Now, the strike by nurses at Mensha Garden Hospital is biting hard, particularly for patients. A number of them on admission have had to be discharged prematurely this morning due to the unavailability of caregivers. The striking nurses are on an indefinite strike demanding the sack of the regional NSS boss, Alex Opokumisa, who is reported to have held insult at a nurse at a facility for chastising his daughter, who is a medical officer at the Mensha Government Hospital, over medication meant for a patient. Although the NSS boards has since been suspended, the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association says he should be sacked. My colleague Erastus Asari Donko visited the facility and spoke to some patients and relatives who have been lamenting the effect of the strike on them. Uh, they are threat to go on strike. Uh, we are currently at the surgical ward. As you can see, uh, many of the patients have been asked to go home. A short while ago, we had uh, motorcycles coming in to pick uh, patients who cannot walk. And uh, they've been given medications and been asked to treat them at home until the nurses resume. When you enter the main uh, hospital here, emergency services are working, but then working partially, I must say, because there are doctors on duty, but then if the cases are severe, they wouldn't have any nurses to help them or assist them to take care of the patients. And so they will have to refer. And so currently, though the emergency unit is working, they are doing referrals to Confanochi Teaching Hospital, Suntreso Government Hospital, and, and, and others until further notice. That is what is happening here. So the uh, people you see here, these are relatives of patients who have come in uh, to pick their uh, uh, patients out of the uh, surgical unit. I'll try to get in here and speak with some of the uh, relatives who are currently preparing their relatives to take them uh, home. But there is this woman I would like us to uh, focus attention on for a moment. Uh, Mama, um, yes, she doesn't want her face to show. She's telling me, yes, we will not be showing your face. Uh, she has a swollen leg. But so, maybe we have more pressure. Maybe we have more pressure. Maybe we have more Na you crew. Na I have signed a midibe Mansia hospital. Mansia hospital so by and you ska Panya woo me me wo panye but soon be a me wo for or more the mammy free and son a dru any be be in a mansia mammy free and says I have seen him coffee me num de may no me wo kapre kura me beto juro mi nye bi na se de mi nan so aye nu mi nim se de me ye enti mi sra gwa me enti mi sra ni mi di yankopo sra nu me si a hosu beti de e age e wo mu pe wo nya ma wo mu na wo mu hwe ye ye do so wo ha na se si a wo mu nye juma mi mi ti ho mi nim be bi a me ko mi nim be bi a so me ye no ho so, uh, in, in basically, what she's saying is that um, when she comes to the Mensha Government Hospital, uh, uh, they have insurance and it covers treatment, covers uh, the insurance covers treatment, and so they are not paying for injections, they are not paying for medication, and that is why they come here. Now, she's been asked to go to another hospital, she doesn't have any money to go to another hospital. So she's appealing to government to attend to the needs of the nurses, let them come back to work so they can take care of her. And that is what she's saying, that she has diabetes, she has a swollen leg, and she cannot move anywhere. So when you come here, there are two doctors on duty. As you can see, uh, they are working actively, uh, but then they need the full support of nurses to be able to carry out uh, the duty that they, they, they perform on a daily basis. Well, let's now take you to the 38th National Farmers' Day uh, celebration where, in the eastern region, where the um, regional minister says the region prioritizes agriculture by increasing the involvement of women and the youth in agribusinesses. He says it's evident in government's flagship PFJ planting for, for export and raw development, rowing for food and jobs, and the 1D1F. Let's cross over live uh, to 
at the place where the president of the republic is speaking now. The emphasis at the summit was to help avert extreme poverty and looming hunger, it's specified in the UN Sustainable Development Goals 1 and 2, respectively. It was a call to action by all countries to prioritize agriculture and recommit to the transformation of food systems to build resilience and ensure sustainable food security. In this respect, I find the theme for this year's Farmers' Day celebration, accelerating agricultural development through value addition, most appropriate and timely. Value addition as a means of accelerating the development of agriculture is one of the logical strategies for ensuring food security, and rightly so. I say this because of the perennial problem of post-harvest losses experienced in most countries, including Ghana. Since 2017, strategic interventions in the agriculture sector have emphasized value addition through the implementation of the One District, One Factory flagship program by government. It is instructive to note that 172 of the 296 factories to be established under the program are agro-based, processing the rapidly increasing farm output of our farmers. Clearly, it is evident that Ghana has been put firmly on the track of value addition. Government appreciates fully that value addition is one of the best ways to unlocking the huge potential of Ghana's agriculture. Current developments in the country have reinforced the need to direct greater attention to promoting value addition. As a country, it is important to draw on very hard lessons from the impact of external factors on our food systems. Food prices in urban centers are unacceptably high. However, it is equally true that some internal factors are also contributing to the high prices. Government continues to evaluate the situation for appropriate action to be taken. Indeed, in July 2022, Cabinet set up an interministerial committee with a brief to intervene directly in the foodstuff market by buying food at the farm gate and transporting it for sale at urban centers. The Ministry of Food and Agriculture started the pilot food market in November by arranging for traders to bring food items such as plantain, yam, and rice direct to Accra from the production areas for direct sale to civil servants and the general public. The market has been so well patronized that it has been extended to four other locations within Greater Accra and is being rolled out in Kumase, Kufuidua, and Takradi urban centers as well. And this is to enable consumers access to foodstuffs at affordable prices. Kono Chairperson, agriculture will continue to remain a top priority of my government. The massive investments made in the sector attest to this fact. The positive narrative about Ghana's support to the agriculture sector is that unlike in several other countries, Ghana is better prepared and has demonstrated resilience to the current adversities threatening to destabilize our food systems. This has been possible because of the sound pragmatic policies and programs rolled out at the inception of my stewardship. Our flagship program Planting for Food and Jobs, PFJ, with its focus on improving farm productivity through the use of technology on farms, 
has succeeded in increasing our food security and open up new opportunities for diversifying agricultural exports by promoting six tree crops for future substantial foreign exchange earnings. In 2016, government inherited production levels of 1.7 million metric tons of maize and 665,000 metric tons of rice. Under the Planting for Food and Jobs program, Maize production reached 3.4 million tons by 2021 and rise to 1.2 million metric tons. The credit must go to our gallant farmers, fishers, and value chain actors who embrace the planting for food and job policies and leverage the opportunities created by the enabling environment for agricultural development. By design, planting for food and jobs program has targeted other sectors under agriculture with promising results. Under its rearing for food and jobs module, some 134,400 birds and small ruminants were distributed to 1,254 beneficiaries in 2022 alone. In addition, 900,000 broiler day old chicks, together with 900 metric tons of feed and vaccines, have been contracted out for supply to farmers next year. Still, under the livestock sector, government has released 15.6 million CDs as payment of compensation to 280 farms affected by the highly pathogenic avian influenza. There is also support for disease surveillance, public awareness creation, capacity building, and the procurement of motorbikes for operational activities to enhance early detection, prevention, and disease management. As part of institutional strengthening for the Veterinary Service Directorate, 550 veterinary officers and allied staff have been recruited this year alone. Colonel Chairperson, the achievements of my government include the promotion of selected tree crops to diversify export earnings for, for the sector. For more than a century, Ghana has relied heavily on cocoa for foreign exchange earnings whilst the potential for several other tree crops remains untapped. By an act of parliament, the Tree Crop Development Authority was established in 2020 to coordinate and promote the development of six tree crops, namely cashew, rubber, oil palm, coconut, mango, and shea. At maturity, these selected crops will have the combined potential of generating annually an additional 12 billion United States dollars to supplement the annual 2 billion United States dollars from cocoa. Since the launch of the tree crop development program in 2018, several nurses have been, have been established with the participation of the private sector. The Ministry, through the Tree Crops Development Authority, TCDA, facilitated the provision of 2.7 million improved seedlings to some 11,100 farmers during the 2022 cropping season. I commend the District Assemblies for their participation in this effort. And I continue to urge our chiefs, landowners and prospective investors to leverage the opportunities created in the tree crop subsector. <coughs> Ghana Cocoa Board and other partners have facilitated the smooth introduction and enhancement of major interventions such as the National Cocoa Rehabilitation Program, the Hand Pollination Program, 
the mass pruning exercise, cocoa diseases and pest control program, the subsidized fertilizer distribution program, amongst others. <coughs> Please excuse me. I've been reliably informed that two years after we launched the National Cocoa Rehabilitation Program in the Western North Region, a total farm area of 56,343 hectares have been fully treated across the growing cocoa growing regions as of September 30th, 2022. As a result of the success of the program, thousands of farmers who had abandoned their cocoa farms due to the devastating effect of the cocoa swollen sheet virus disease have returned and are active again in the cocoa business. <coughs> you have to excuse me, I have a bad cough. It is important to underscore that these interventions brought back smiles on the faces of our Chinese farmers and also provided employment to some 27,000 youth in scheme areas. There is 1,361 as technical assistants, 1,845 as disease spotters, and 23,913 as farm hands. Colonel Chalpas, in 2019, the government began the implementation of the Cocoa Management System CMS to help establish a credible database on Ghana's cocoa. The Integrated Cocoa Farm Database which includes the development of a software data system, a census of all cocoa farmers in Ghana, <clears throat> as well as mapping of all farms, will ensure for the first time the availability of correct, of accurate information on land size, geographic locations, population, and record of cocoa farmers and farms in Ghana. I'm happy to announce again that the CMS is ready, setting in motion the processes of rolling out fully the much-anticipated Cocoa Farmers Pension Scheme. The mandatory pension scheme, which takes effect in the current 2022-2023 crop season, will provide a decent pension for cocoa farmers after a minimum of five years' contribution. It is important to mention that the Living Income Differential LID pricing mechanism, being spearheaded by Cocoa d'Ivoire and Ghana, the two biggest global producers of cocoa, through the Côte d'Ivoire Ghana Cocoa Initiative is progressing despite seeming obstacles from some of our international trading partners. I want to assure our farmers that everything possible is being done to see to the full implementation of the scheme to cushion them against price volatility and also guarantee sustainable income, livelihoods and income for them. Fellow Ghanaians, the sustainability of the cocoa sector is contingent on also how effectively we are able to fight the devastating effects of the illegal mining menace Galamse. All of us, farmers and citizens, have a collective responsibility to bring this environmental canker to a halt if we do not want to ruin the inheritance our forefathers bequeathed us. 
other interventions implemented by my government, which are critical for accelerated development of the country, including the following. A. Greenhouse Training Centers. Three greenhouse training centers with attached commercial units at Dawenya, Akumadai, and Bojase for training youth in high quality vegetable production have been constructed. These vegetables are sold to high end shops such as Palace Mall, ShopRite, Starbite, KFC, and Burger King in Tema. Accra and Kumasi, respectively. To date, some 537 youth have been trained, with 340 of them having received internship training in Israel. B. Irrigation. Since 2017, substantial investments have been directed to the construction and rehabilitation of 12 irrigation schemes for which six are 90% complete, five are between 45 to 70% complete, and the Pualugu Dam currently is a 5% completion. Together, these irrigation projects will make available 31,450 hectares of land for all year round crop production when completed. C warehouses. Measures taken by government to address other major marketing problems in the agriculture sector include construction of 80 warehouses of 1,000 metric ton capacity each for food storage and to reduce post-harvest losses. 65 of the 80 have been fully completed, handed over and are currently in use. The remainder are, at all, are all at advanced stages of completion, ranging from 70% to 90%. D, mechanization. To accelerate the process of agricultural modernization, my government, through various bilateral arrangements, has imported assorted agricultural machinery, including tractors, power tillers, planters, threshers, combine harvesters, and handheld equipment for smallholder farmers at a total value of 67 million United States dollars. These farm equipment and machinery are being sold as subsidized rates to farmers and other investors. Currently, I'm happy to report the processes have been concluded towards the establishment of a tractor assembly plant in Ghana. This will go a long way to reduce the cost of tractors, improve access to tractor parts, and create jobs. E, agriculture financing. To promote an increased investment in agriculture, government established the Ghana Incentive-Based Risk Sharing Agricultural Lending Scheme, GESA, in 2018. A little more than three years on, GASA has provided some 347 million CDs of guarantees, covering loans of some 720 million CDs to some 100 agribusinesses. These businesses are engaged in sale of agricultural inputs, direct production, aggregation, processing, marketing, and export. The guarantees have contributed to lower interest rates for borrowers. To boost, to boost further financing for agribusinesses, government has established the Development Bank of Ghana, capitalized initially at 750 million euros which will prioritize agriculture in its activities. F, Ghana Cares. Under the Ghana Cares or Baltampa program, provision has also been made to enhance access to affordable financing for agribusinesses. A 50% interest rate subsidy <laughs>
provided to agribusinesses in selected value chains, namely rice, maize, soya bean, tomato, and poultry. This complements the Outgrower and Value Chain Fund, which was established 11 years ago to provide medium to long-term financing at significantly reduced interest rates. Under the Savannah Investment Project, an amount of two million United States dollars is also earmarked to provide credit to poultry value chain actors, especially those in processing. E, the U Start program. Government has launched the U Start program to provide training, entrepreneurial skills, and financial support to entrepreneurial youth within the age bracket of 18 to 40 years to help them start, build, and grow their businesses. The U-STAR program will be a very important vehicle for equipping the youth to enter into agro-based agro businesses such as input distribution, marketing, and value addition, and leveraging on digital technology. Use the opportunity to encourage the district assemblies and faith-based organizations to support the youth to take advantage of the program. Colonel Chairperson, the overwhelming evidence points to an impressive performance of government in pursuit of its agricultural modernization and transformation agenda. From an average of 3.8% growth in the five-year period from 2012 to 2016, Average annual growth nearly doubled to 6.3% in the period 2017 to 2021. In the most recent years, the sector growth increased strongly from 4.7% in 2019 to 7.4% in 2020 and 8.4% in 2021, the highest annual performance in the Fourth Republic. This sterling performance compares favorably with the Comprehensive Africa, Africa Agricultural Development Program's benchmark target of 6% of growth of agriculture for the attainment of national food security. Ironically, the highest growth rates posted were in 2020 and 2021, when the COVID-19 pandemic and other negative forces such as climate change and outbreak of diseases were impacting the center. Going forward, government will deepen investment in these areas and build on the achievements so far through additional interventions. Measures to promote import substitution. As part of measures to ameliorate the current economic difficulties, I have already outlined policy measures to, compare, to curtail the imports of some food commodities for which we have comparative advantage. So that's the president uh, speaking at Koforidia where the nation is honoring its farmers. Uh, we will so keep you updated with whatever will be happening there. But to other stories now, an F4 tanker has been involved in an accident around Bimbila in the Nanumba North municipality of the northern region, spilling out its content. The tanker crashed into another vehicle and a police barrier dawn Friday, December 2nd, 2022 at Lepusi before somersaulted, uh, somersaulting several times, spilling its content. Residents saw this as a windfall rushing with containers to get their share of the booty, according to the Northern Regional Pu Public Relations Officer of the Fire Service, Hudu Baba. The four tankers' brakes failed, crashing into another vehicle, which was carrying an assorted drink and punching into the police barrier and some assaulting several times. He joins us live with more. Good afternoon to you, sir, and grateful for your time. Uh, uh, when this happened, we don't know the casualty. W were there any casualties involved? Good afternoon to you and your cherished listeners and viewers. Um, there wasn't any casualty involved, fortunately. Wow. Um, uh, so if there weren't any casualties involved, we know that some of these can be quite dangerous for people who will be going there to fetch uh, the content. 
Um, yes. what, what happened afterwards? Yes, um, our men got the information earlier this morning that there was an accident just at Kusiga a community under the Wimbla uh, Municipal Assembly. So they quickly rushed in there, considering the fact that it is a fuel tanker, and we all know the content of uh, such uh, vehicles are very uh, dangerous mm. to the people uh, around. So quickly they rushed to the scene and tried to mitigate the situation. Mm. not to uh, escalate. Okay. So our men were able to salvage the situation by protecting the public from uh, uh, rushing to uh, fetch the fuel. It was actually a diesel tanker. Mm. So the diesel spelled and they were rushing to uh, fetch and our men have to intervene to prevent them from uh, such activities. Considering uh, danger and hazards of a uh, such context. Mm. Yeah. Uh, this will obviously result in a traffic situation on, on the road. What's the current situation? Yes, uh, the police was, were also there mm. to direct traffic. And so it was uh, handled very well. As of now, as we speak, they invited the Zoom Lion to bring the track to. Uh, move the vehicle so the the traffic situation is uh, normal now okay uh, where are the drivers of the vehicles involved yes um quickly the police have to uh, intervene so they are currently with the police uh aiding investigation mm. it means no injuries to any of them right no, no okay not at all. Uh, which 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 company owns the tanker the, the four tanker? That and of course, the the one that was carrying drinks as well. Yes, the drink was uh, being transported to Yendi, while the fuel tanker was also uh, moving towards Pandai. But as of now, we are here to also commence a proper investigation, so I wouldn't be able to. Uh, tell you exactly the company that. Uh, okay, yeah. in interesting. Um, you, in, in, in these circumstances, of course, you've gotten the people off the road, but the presence of some of these chemicals will still be there. And of course, it would pose as a threat to road users and people who live there. What are we doing to ensure that there won't be any after, uh, uh, you know, negative happening aftermath of this accident? Our men are in what we call the foam concentrate to uh, manage the situation there. And so if the public are very assured that there wouldn't be any hazard at all mm. to okay. cause any harmful effect to anybody. All right. Yeah. Grateful to you for joining us, uh, Hudu Baba Thank ASD PRO for the fire service in that part of the country. And so watch and join us today. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll bring you business. Stay with us. Welcome back from the break. Time for us to bring you business. And the Ghana Exim Bank through its Tuesday market initiative I said it will enhance access to financing for SMEs in all economic sectors, as well as to support growth. According to Deputy Chief Executive Officer in charge of banking and business, Rosemary Beryl Acha, the bank will embark on various capacity building programs to scale up production. She spoke to Joy Business at the Tuesday market event. The bank, as part of the World Cup, has rolled out a campaign to promote trade and patronage of made in Ghana goods. Rosemary Acha believes sports could be used as a tool to champion trade and promote export diversification with the aim of achieving economic transformation for jobs. We launched the Think Soccer, Think Trade. Basically what we are telling the world that we believe here in Ghana we can leverage on the platform of our Made in Ghana products. That's the make 
products to create awareness for our made in Ghana products and the entrepreneur as well. Um, for some time now we have been preaching about import substitution. We've been preaching about uh, sending Ghana into an export um, led economy which we eat what we grow. Um, 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 we should patronize made in Ghana products to prosper. So we believe that on the platform of soccer we can do that. Uh, we will still continue to provide financing and to make them competitive in international marketplace through various capacity building programs will continue uh, uh, our Tuesday market and then we'll venture into other markets abroad and um, the regional capitals. Member of Parliament for Offensive South, Isaac Yawopoku, entreated Ghanaians to patronize made in Ghana goods. I'm asking why, you know, we keep importing virtually everything. We have everything in this country. So I'm wondering why we keep importing everything and our foreign exchange you know is uh, uh, the, the CD is struggling against uh, the dollar if we actually make conscious efforts to decide that as a country maybe 10 years on we are not going to import certain items I'm sure we'll be able to do that you know going around from what I've seen uh, cocoa for example what we export the cocoa that we export if you take the port we only export uh, 25 percent of the port. The bank has focused primarily on raw material based development because it identifies that strategy as the key to sustain agro processing. So that's uh, business. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll bring you latest from the world of sport. Thank you very much for joining us for sports. My name is Abigail Sanasus. Well, in less than three hours, the Black Stars of Ghana will line up against Uruguay, hoping to get a win at most to be able to qualify for the round of 16 of the ongoing FIFA World Cup in Qatar. And at the Al Janoub Stadium, and standing by is my colleague George Ado Jr., who just entered the facility to see what the Black Stars would do first. Um, George, good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon to you, Adigil, if you can hear me. Everything is fine here at the Al Jazeera Stadium. I hope you are good back in Accra and hoping for a great result. Uh, we, are, we are also hoping with you guys that at least you deliver well above what you gave us against South Korea. But tell us, what is the feeling like ahead of that clash? In less than three hours, we should see our gallant stars outside. Uh, I went to the Black Stars um, Hotel, not... Uh, long ago, um, the boys are getting themselves ready. At these days, so we're told not to say the boys. Okay, the men, they say they are men. They tell me <laughs> I'm, I'm always calling them boys. But yeah, the men are getting ready for uh, the game. We'll be seeing them shortly at the stadium. Um, I was there at a, at a final training session yesterday, and I can say that the camp is very, very focused. Um, they have actually ensured that they are not talking a lot about revenge. They're looking at qualifying to the next stage of the competition. It's their will to come onto the pitch and, and get the, the most important result, which is the maximum that is going on to get all three points. Every player is fit. We don't have any injury concerns. That is really, really good. But it also means that it's a selection headache for Coach Otoado. We still do not have an entire idea of what his starting lineup will be. But I'm very sure about 70% to 80% of those who have been playing in the first two games, because there are no injuries, may be giving an opportunity. Maybe we may see one or two changes um, based on the opposition that we're coming up against in Uruguay. Uh, the supporters are also gathering, singing their songs, hitting their drums, and making sure that the boys are very, very fit and ready for it. Here at the Al Janoub Stadium, I'm inside the media center. I just went around there. Um, the spectators' entrance, and I saw a lot of um, Uruguayans who were getting into the stadium, obviously to support Uruguay. But I tell you, outside the stadium, we had more Ghanaians who are getting ready with their tickets and checking out their hire cards and are looking to get into the stadium, uh, you know, hours before the game will start. If, if, if I can explain a bit how the, um, the location is like and in terms of the navigation around the stadium, you probably have to walk some 10 minutes before you can get into the, the stadium. So a lot of the supporters have had to come very, very early. And some have even come more than early. And that's why I see some of them getting into it. But everything is fine. 
I was here with Gary L. Smith. We're just checking into the media center and we are very ready to bring you uh, all the coverage that you need in terms of the updates uh, from here. Ah, thank you very much. And let me put you on the spot. Any predictions thus far? Because it was so um, not expected that we would be able to score more than three goals at, at the tournament like this, given our, uh, our most recent uh, games and score lines. Are you seeing any more goals in today's game? Hey, give me a win. I'm great. Uh, <laughs> If you give me a draw, considering uh, the fact that if South Korea lose to Portugal, the draw is fine, it's great. I think this assignment today is qualified to the next stage of the competition. But like, what, as we saw yesterday in terms of the drama, I don't think Japan went into the game thinking we're going to top the group. The truth is, if we do our job, take care of our business and beat Uruguay, and South Korea beat Portugal, we can end up topping the group and we can escape Brazil in the round of 16. So there are a lot of possibilities. I promise there's going to be a... a an emotional roller coaster, no matter how you look at it. Hopefully, uh, all those who are going to have mini heart attacks will be fine at the end. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, George. We know that we'll get to hear from you again from reports and hopefully some good news at the end of the exchanges. Well, Coach Otoado says that keeping a clean sheet will not be a major headache since we are just all looking forward to qualify and make it past the South Americas. Let's hear from Black Stars head coach Otoado. They have to win, so I, I don't think they have a choice in, in playing maybe more defensively. This is how we expect them, and, but we prepare for everything and we, we expect them to press, to, to press high, to to um, try to force and dictate the game and, and they know that uh, a draw is not good enough for them so surely there's no other option for them than to, to attack and um, I think we will have um, that will, is also a chance for us because there will be gaps in, uh, in, in their defense and um, yeah we'll see we have to be solidly strong uh, it's also yeah. my wish but I mean football is played by two uh, teams so one team can have an idea, but surely um, there's a strong opponent, and again there will be a strong opponent, which will make it very very difficult for us. You know they don't they won't stand there and say, look here yeah, you can score and we won't score. So this is this is the World Cup. This is um, how it is, and um, surely um, I wished we could have had easier games, but I think then we wouldn't be at the World Cup. Um, I said it before, it's going to be tight, I'm very very sure, I'm sorry for everybody uh, giving heart attack, um, we will try our best, but we have a very strong opponent, they will try their best as well, so um, they will come with everything they have, um, this is a, for, for them it's a chance also to, to qualify, so it's not going to be easy and um, um, these things we can't decide, we try to do our best, but the opponent is so strong, so yeah, I guess it will be a tight game again. Back home, Ghanaians are having some level of expectations ahead of that large group H game, and we got to meet up with some of them to share those expectations. Zata. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I want to Ghana win 2-0. Uh, yeah, 2-0. Which players are you expecting to score? Uh, Kudis and Pate. Mm. Yeah. Anything they need to do, any tactics they need to employ to win the game? Oh, it's not my, not my information. 4-2-2. Uh, two, two. It's 4-4-2. Four, four, yeah, right. It's 4-4-2. Four, four, if you play 4-4-2, four, four, by all means, you, you, they will win the match today. Okay. Yeah, the match, yeah. I think they're going to go win. They're going to go win by 2-0. 2-0. What should they do to win? We have any chance to win tune in this column. We are playing against Uruguay. Are you sure? I mean, I need a fair for the year. Yeah, fair for the year. Only two names will score. Only two goals now. Just two goals. Two goals. Who are the ones who will score the goals? Oh, Kudus. Kudus and William. Kudus and William. William, who will score goal. You are sure that they do? Sure, sure. And today we reach Ghana. Well, Ghana, more goals. We reach you well. Today, more goals. Inshallah. You see that player that gets the talk about. I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. You mentioned the name, the Kudus player. Today, do more wonders for us. More wonders. Today, I wish Ghana. I don't want to predict, but today I will predict. Ghana will win 2 1. Again, 2 1. Today, all the best to the blaster. And then we. Wish 
Well, we are expecting Ghana to be able to make us proud and then we all knew what happened the last time we were eliminated by Uruguay so this time we are expecting Ghana to make us proud by winning the game so that we can progress to the next stage. What are your predictions for the game? Well, for me, I don't really have uh, predictions, but the most important thing is we should be able to take the train point and then qualify to the next season. I think that is the most important thing in football. Any players you are tipping to put a ball behind the net this afternoon? Yes, uh, I'll be very glad if uh, Kudus Mohamed, who put uh, such a tremendous and fantastic performance, he put uh, between Ghana and Korea. I'll be very glad and very happy because he is coming from... Nima, and then that is where we are also coming from. So I'll be very glad if he will be able to score. If he couldn't, and then we'll be able to uh, support the team with his performance so that the team can win. I'll be very glad. And some students of Solomon Bennett Memorial School in Sunyane have this message for the Black Stars. <laughs> It's more than a game. It is where our hearts lie. It is our passion. It ignites hope, patriotism, and pride in us as Africans. As Amitre said, everyone has the fire, but champions know when to ignite the spark. Black Stars of Ghana, we believe you can pull this through because you are relentless warriors. Like Pele said, the more difficult the victory, the greater the happiness in winning. We are ready to cheer you on with our hearts, strength and mind. Even if you don't win, give us a good show. Show the world that in Africa lies the spirit of bravery and mastery. Let the world know that as Africans, even if we lose all our blood in a battle, one thing keeps us moving, and that is hope. We will always keep hope alive. You are our friend, and we love you dearly. Fight for us. Fight for Ghana. Fight for Africa. We are with you. Nostalgic moments from the Bongahafa region. But hey, Black Stars, we continue to wish you the very best. But that'll be all for sports now. My name is Abigail Sanastosu. Thank you. Uh, that's how we wrap the bulletin up. There's more news on myjoyonline.com. We're all wishing the Black Stars all the best. Let's go out there and support them massively for them to win. This is Joy News. Have a great afternoon.